Okay, now we're live here at the Dinosaur Dungeon. <clears throat> I'm just going to share this while I'm waiting for people to join up. Uh, let me just get on my normal Facebook page here while we're starting up. And I'm going to uh, get this shared so people can start watching right now. All right, we're going to share this to our own page. Share it for on my own timeline. Sorry about this, guys. I'm just trying to get this set up. I'm always uh, trying to work out the kinks of uh, doing live videos. It can be a little bit frustrating sometimes. So I'm going to uh, I'm also going to try and uh, go on it from my Facebook on my cell phone so I can see the comments a lot easier and I'll make sure that uh, my sound is off so that we don't hear it and then I can see this okay now let's go back to the actual page and here we go so what I want to do is continue sculpting this uh, third scale ceratosaurus bust I've been kinda just doing this here and there saving it for live videos and stuff like that so I figured I'd uh, do it a little bit tonight um, <coughs> so but I'm just waiting for um, I've got my sculpting clay in the crock pot here this is um, monster clay it's really awesome stuff um, once I'm done I will uh, um, once I'm done the live broadcast I'll put this into uh, like descriptions on where to get uh, monster clay uh, I'll leave links uh, below this uh, video I'm not st streaming live to YouTube usually I'm doing them simultaneously now but I figured tonight I would just uh, I just do it uh, just the uh, Facebook page so I figured uh, also getting uh, hitting a thousand subscribers to the uh, or a thousand likes rather to the uh, uh, Facebook page definitely uh, warrants making a video so I'm just gonna open this up this clay is not ready yet it's gonna take probably about 10 minutes so we're gonna let that sit and uh, while that's sitting I'm going to explain uh, some another project that I'm working on just uh, while we're waiting for this to heat up and uh, feel free to ask me any questions about any dinosaur related stuff um, I'm always down for answering questions I like to chat about anything dinosaur related so feel free doesn't have to be just about um, <coughs> it doesn't have to be just about uh, what we're sculpting here so um, hopefully everybody can hear me um, I'm just going to check that out and I'm going to send that out as a message make sure everyone can hear me um, <coughs> so please answer and let me know make sure it's all good so I'm going to uh, talk about my Shunosaurus just for about five minutes and then we're going to jump into this guy here um, so I had to, uh, uh, if some of you are familiar with my Facebook page, uh, you'd know that, uh, I did, um, I sculpted a Shinosaurus and once I completed it, I took, uh, another casting of it. I cut it up and I customized it. Um, and then I made a Shinosaurus pair, which I entered into the Torcan model show in Toronto and then later took it to Wonderfest and actually uh, won some awards at both of those which I'm truly grateful for that people thought it was that good and then I received a message that somebody actually wanted that redone so what I'm working on now and I'll just kinda explain this to you guys as I go along here is this um, so this is a casting pieces of a casting of my Shinosaurus and you can see that parts are missing you can see the legs have been cut right out of the torso and it's filled with foam 
So, and here's a piece of the leg right here, which fits on here, and then will be reassembled, and then it will be made to stand up on its hind legs, like uh, exactly the same as the other one did. So that's uh, something I've been starting today, and uh, I'm also going to make a video on how I'm doing this and also again about using uh, a new product called epoxy uh, clay um, which I love a lot I just uh, started using epoxy clay uh, recently and uh, it works I like it actually a little bit better than epoxy sculpt especially for making large um, pieces like in the tail here I'm gonna to have to re-sculpt that most of the neck I'm gonna to have to re-sculpt so for that um, epoxy clay works really well so um, I'm just going to show you quickly what I'm talking about it's this stuff right here works really good so I'm actually going to do a, a review video on that soon so stay tuned for that um, and the other thing I'm going to do a video of that a lot of people have been asking for and I asked on Instagram if people wanted to see it was um, this guy's a little messy from grinding and doing work but uh, a video on molding and casting you can see I put a keyhole into this guy and uh, this is the the bust of the uh, Yang Chuenosaurus. I'll try and shift the light a little bit so you can see there's some glass eyes in there there we go that was perfect for a moment but uh, so I'm I'm casting this guy I'm starting to as of now so uh, um, I'm gonna make a video just on uh, well actually several videos on molding and casting hopefully in the next couple of days I will start that and I'm going to start with uh, the basic stuff about uh, making the keyholes and stuff like that so stay tuned for that I'm going to do a lot of those uh, videos I'm hoping to do a, a series on YouTube so I will do them live over Facebook and then I will edit them and I'll put them on YouTube so that people can watch from there all right, so we're starting to get some warm clay here, but it's not quite ready yet. This clay, uh, I'll show you right here, is like... Oh, and he flipped over. <laughs> That's actually loose on purpose so that I can turn him and work on the inside of the mouth, which is something I need to do. So, see, it makes it a lot easier. You can just turn him turn him whatever way work on the top of his head it's uh, it, it just makes it a lot easier to uh, to do this I need to get this lid back on here quick um, and we'll just give that a couple more minutes um, so I'll talk to you guys uh, a little bit about some other things while I am uh, While I'm just waiting for that to warm up, I'll show you uh, another project. Actually, I did a live video on this guy a little while ago, and then I stopped and had him on the shelf, but uh, I'm bringing him back down. This is um, a 140th scale Allosaurus. It's an Allosaurus Maximus or a Sornophaganax. It's, it's, uh, it's actually going to go with the... Um, with uh, my batats, I have a. I'm not sure any, if anyone's familiar with the line of batat dinosaurs that Dan Larusso sculpted. They used to be Target exclusives, but now you can find them in. Uh, you can find them in other stores, and they were. Um, they're just figurines, um, but they're very uh, accurate for their size, and I always like to collect small things like that, um, as. Um, references um, so if you find patat dinosaurs you should definitely collect those especially if you want to get into sculpting and stuff like that because it's always nice to have a small 3d object to look at for uh, reference when you're sculpting 
Um, if anyone is interested in knowing what those look like, I will show you a couple of them here in the box and one out of the box. My chair is spinning around, probably annoying everyone. So here's one of them in the box. The ta Terra, this is the Carnotaurus. These are like five, six dollars American. Here's uh, a couple more of them. And the, like I said, they're they're uh, fairly accurate for their size. This one's uh, the Pachyrannosaurus is really nice. And you can repaint them, put them on bases. I've seen people make them look like their their model kits, which is awesome. So definitely check those out. Um, so I just want to give a shout out to someone on YouTube I saw yesterday. I was going through my YouTube. Uh, subscribers and saw this one uh, that I've subscribed to for a while called Sculpture Geek. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with him, but you should uh, check it out. Go go type it in. Um, that's actually what inspired me to get back to this. He was doing um, a sculpture of Link from uh, from Zelda, for the, the old Nintendo game from when I was a kid. I think they still make them. But... Um, and what a phenomenal job so I got to give a shout out to him he did amazing work and I mean it so cool and the lines like you know he just brushed out all the lines he made everything so smooth like if you look at this guy you can kind of see it's still choppy looking so it's definitely going to take some work to get that uh, figured out but this guy and he's just using like a Chavant clay so but amazing work. I've never used Chavant, so I don't know. But it looks like it has similar properties to to uh, Monster Clay. So I'm just going to try and start getting this. I'm going to get some of this out. It's getting a little warm here. You can see that it actually can, you can melt this stuff, which is really awesome. It works so nice. Now I've got paint on me and I don't know where that came from. <laughs> That's not cool. Let me get weird. Alright, let's get uh, a little bit more out of there. Well it's starting to warm up and then we can get rocking on this here. Okay, so you can see how I started filling out the face here. What I did in the layer before this, as you can see down here, is I, like this is a muscle, so I, I did all the muscles um, originally on the top, like here, in here, this one, a little bit of the nostril. The nostril needs to be filled out more, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to work on that, but tonight I'm going to do the lower jaw. We're going to put some skin on the lower jaw. Just on this side, if you, if I turn it around, it's kind of hard to spin. I'll try though. You can see that, and I'll turn the camera just a little bit so you can see this is what the other side looks like. So this was the last layer before the layer that you're seeing now. So we'll spin it back around. I'll actually keep it pretty close. And then I'll turn it back a little bit so you can see getting a lot of likes thank you for that so all right so it's kind of cool actually looking over at my phone to check the comments because uh, it's got about looks like about a 20 second delay so it's kind of weird all right so we're gonna start I'm gonna try and do this in a way that you can see so we're just going to go to the halfway point we're going to leave <coughs> a little bit like that we're going to start you can see a tooth is missing there it broke off that's okay we'll just make a new one and insert it it'll actually be easier once it's uh <coughs> once this is all sculpted um, and again, 
Now you can see here it's kind of hard to do underneath. So this right here is why it's awesome that I can flip this over and get uh, get this smoothed out. So another thing I need now, I'm gonna just quickly lean in and grab is uh, a hobby knife because I actually want to keep this. perfectly, well, as perfect as it can be, on the halfway. <clears throat> I'm actually seriously contemplating doing one of those sculptures where half of it is fleshed out completely and the other half is, uh, is muscle. So, alright, so we kind of smooth that out a little bit. We're not going to get too crazy with it right now. Just kind of get an idea of where we want, to, where we want it to go. Um, you'll probably notice I'm not wearing gloves and uh, you're thinking about fingerprints all over it. That doesn't matter with this stuff. Like it, in the end, even it doesn't matter so much, maybe a little bit, but uh, you can just run a little torch over this or heat gun and it actually melt it and it will melt all the fingerprints. So that's actually a, a pretty cool technique. That's why I wanted to try this because with Sculpey, I, I actually don't really like using um, <clears throat> sorry, I don't really like uh, using gloves because it can be uh, it can be a pain in the butt sometimes and hard to work with. So I try to uh, <clears throat> I try to just not use gloves, and then with the uh, Sculpey, I kind of um, use uh, alcohol and it smooths it out. Which you can do with this too. There's actually um, a brand that um, there's a, there's a brand that you can uh, get that's made from the monster makers who make this stuff. So, but I just I just like to use alcohol. I haven't tried alcohol on this yet, so I don't know if it works. So I'm not going to recommend it. All right, so let's uh, get in here. We we'll get a little more on here. We don't want it too thick yet. Got to hold it up because it will fall. And we're going to have to smear some clay in between the teeth like I did on the top half. So, for any of you who are watching, if you feel like uh, throwing in your two cents on dinosaur lips, I'd love to hear that. I know there's been a big debate over the last year. There's actually a guy from the University of Mississauga who uh, came out and said that you wouldn't see the teeth when the mouth was closed and the dinosaurs had lips. And then there was a paper, I think, in the last three or four months that um, was talking about the same thing and said, no, no, that's not true. And, and they would... Uh, they wouldn't have had lips and uh, it would have been a little more like a crocodile now I haven't gotten back into the into the research papers um, I think with Ceratosaurus personally it's so primitive or considered to be so primitive that uh, it probably was more crocodilian in his uh, in his face so that's where I'm heading with this guy but I, I, like I said, I'm interested to hear anybody's thoughts on the lips versus no lips thing and, you know, lips on the T-Rex and uh, stuff like that. Oh, thanks, Frederick. Thanks for the nice comment, buddy. Nice to see you're watching. You probably have some stuff to say on uh, your thoughts on uh, theropod lips. I'd love to hear your take on it. I know you're... Uh, a really good sculptor and you've been uh, doing some dinosaur stuff so it'll be interesting to hear what uh, what you got to say about it so feel free if you want to uh, chime in on the on the dino lips Cause like I said I'd love to hear other people's take on it so that's the cool thing about doing uh, 
live streams like this is if you can get some conversation going um, you know get questions going and you know see what see other people's thoughts oh I see Donna was watching and uh, said she could hear me perfectly so that's good thanks Donna for getting back to me on that um, All right, I'm just kind of making a. Ah, you're you're a pro Dino Lip. So, does that mean as in T Rex, or does that mean as in like this guy and Allosaurus, or what do you what do you think about that? That's where uh, science kind of is hard for us sometimes, you know. Like we love science, obviously. Anybody sculpting dinosaurs or interested in dinosaurs loves science. But, you know, you watch uh, Jurassic Park and I was, like, Jurassic Park had a huge impact on me, as I've said in many um, videos, any of these live discussions. This is it's definitely one of the reasons for uh, me getting into sculpting but you know you watch the t-rex and it closes its mouth and the big teeth are hanging over the lower jaw and stuff and it you know it looks so realistic back then and you know like it's like you fall in love with that t-rex you know and that's you know and then these new theories come out and you know and you gotta adjust you gotta adjust uh, your artwork and adjust your uh, thoughts about it and, and accept new theories. I mean, I'm not going to say that it's 100% for sure <clears throat> for lips or no lips because, I mean, I, I don't have a clue. You know, I wish that I could... Uh, work at a museum and study these things a lot closer than I do. My dream is to one day uh, do something like this with a life-size dinosaur, you know, a brand new discovery would be like, you know, they cast the skull, I'm the first guy to sculpt the face over it, that would be like a dream come true. So hopefully one day a museum will ask me to do that. Trying to get this smoothed in before I put any more clay below it. All right, so let's see. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it's it's hard to uh, you know like when you're not a scientist you think in much simpler terms so when we say lips or no lips like you know I guess there could be a lot of in between or like you know do they have lips that actually semi cover the teeth or because the T-Rex from Jurassic Park actually did have lips if you if uh, if you look at it it kinda had the jaw the teeth and then the gums and then over the gums or uh, just above the gums was a lip so it, it had that it just it just never could lower them over the all of its teeth so so oh thanks thanks Frederick for the nice comment buddy I hope it happens too <laughs> one day you never know you never know I have uh, been able to start talking to some paleo people and one day I'd like to get out to the um, Society of Vertebrate Paleontology that would be uh, that would be uh, super awesome and get to meet people and you know but for now doing stuff like this is uh, 
you know, this is a good way to get into stuff like that too, right? And people can see it and kind of, you know, make a portfolio and they're like, oh, this guy actually can sculpt. He's not just talking out of his butt, <laughs> you know? So we're just going to, you can see how I'm creating a nice line here before I uh, come over with the rest of it. So just want to get that kind of smoothed out. And I got to go, like I was explaining before, got to get in between those teeth. So we're going to kind of push that down a little bit. Alright, so, so, another question for you, feel free to answer, we might speak and we've talked a little bit about Jurassic Park, so, what about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, how do we feel about that, I know that, uh, well, same thing that happens to most movies nowadays, huge leaks, so, and if they are correct, we've already seen the T-Rex, the Stegosaurus, parts of the Triceratops, so, I'm certainly interested, uh, interested to know your thoughts on that, and whether you think it's going to be a good movie. Oh, thank you, Bruce. Thanks for joining as well. One thing I will say about um, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is uh, I was a little disappointed to hear the news that uh, Legacy FX wasn't uh, making the animatronics. So they went through all this thing, you know, everybody was upset with the first Jurassic World. No, um... Uh, you know, not enough animatronics, and <laughs> so people kind of rallied around, hey, let's get animatronics back. So, well, when you become one of the biggest movies of all time, you kind of get your say, right? So, lots of animatronics coming back, apparently. We've seen quite a few uh, animatronic dinosaurs anyway, and... Uh, But then the news comes out that Legacy Effects isn't doing it. And to me, that's just, I mean, say what you want about Featherless Raptors or whatever. But, I mean, the Jurassic Park franchise did strive for scientific accuracy. The first three, you know, they did put a paleontologist, um, Jack Horner, in. And they, uh, you know, to get the science. And, I mean, the T-Rex... Uh, believe it or not, if I have seen pictures where they had an actual um, fifth scale skull. And uh, Tony McVeigh, I believe it is, uh, sculpted uh, sculpted the original piece. I'm not sure, though. But um, anyway, they sculpted over the skull. They put a lot of effort into scientific accuracy. And, I mean, to me, that's... That's first and foremost, you know, I mean, things change and they're trying to keep the dinosaurs, you know, in with the, uh, kind of looking similar. So I didn't have a, too much of a problem with the raptors not having feathers, but, you know, other than that and, the, and, the, and their hands not facing towards each other, but facing down, kind of like the, the, um, they kind of did th this, and they're supposed to do this, right? Face each other. But other than that, they're still not bad, right? And then they go and get this other company who worked on Star Wars. I mean, that's obviously pretty good to have that in your resume. But still, it's not Stan Winston. It's not Legacy. It's, <clears throat> you know, it's 
So I, personally, I, I'm a little disappointed because, like I said, I got into sculpting because of because of the original Jurassic Park. Uh, actually, the book, The Making of Jurassic Park, was the very one of the very things that inspired me to start sculpting. So, you know, to not have them work on it is a little bit of a letdown. And one thing about Legacy that I'll say is um, if you look in Jurassic World, they did the Apatosaurus, the dying Apatosaurus scene. And that was, to me, one of the absolute best scenes in that movie. I know that sounds kind of weird with all the action and stuff. But that, that's, you know, like, you could tell they were interacting with a real dinosaur. You know, or... or you know, or like they were because they were interacting with something on the set. So I'm just hoping that, you know, despite the little things we've seen that, you know, they've at least taken the information from Legacy because it is a universal property. So Universal technically owns the the rights to those dinosaurs. So hopefully they've taken that information and... Uh, And uh, they're using it to make something a little bit better than what we've seen so far. I think the T-Rex looks okay. It's just a bad angle. So anyway, I'm going to get some, read some comments here. Yeah, the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park were light years ahead of anything we'd seen. Yes, you know what? Y you know what? You're right. They were light years ahead of... I mean, and that that's still... Uh, that movie still stands up to this day. I mean, I can go and watch that right now, and it's awesome. It's like, you know, I mean, there's some parts of it that maybe look dated, but I mean, those effects were uh, were amazing, you know? Um, as far as the Jurassic, uh, the animatronic Jurassic World, I, I would like to see that. I uh, hear it's at the Field Museum in Chicago. So I highly doubt I'll be able to get there. I'm in Canada and Ontario. So it's a good eight hour, eight and a half hour drive. So, <clears throat> but uh, I would love to go see that. So hopefully that happens someday. Hopefully they'll bring it to Canada. That would be nice. It's saying that... Um, and a notification that uh, four other people shared my video. So thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. I really appreciate that. I hope to get as many shares and likes as possible. Um, got uh, Raven and Victor. Awesome dinosaurs. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate that. Thanks for tuning in and watching me sculpt. I try to do this uh, as much as I can. It's uh, it's hard to get the time always to to do these live videos, and uh, my setup's not the best, so I've got to do some work there. Just gonna fold this down. We're gonna turn them upside down because it's a mess under here. So we're gonna smooth all that out. Get it. And I'm going to grab the uh, little torch here in a minute and show you what I mean about melting this clay. So we're going to smooth that out. So yeah, so hopefully uh, Jurassic World turns out, or Jurassic World 2 turns out um, better than the first one. Uh, Hopefully we see some uh, little feathered raptors in there. I mean, if the plot line is true and other people are making dinosaurs, then uh, why wouldn't they be making uh, some feathered dinosaurs? So, that's my thoughts on uh, Jurassic World. So, uh... <coughs> Another question I'll ask uh, to anybody who's watching out there. What do you guys think of <coughs> Sorry, the uh, two new uh, discoveries recently? One was an ankylosaur, the other one was a nodosaur. Um, 
uh, what um, Zool is the name of, of one of them, and he's actually at uh, the ROM right now, uh, named after Ghostbusters. And then the other one, I don't think it has a name. It was a notosaur. It was National Geographic showed it, and I remember the comment where they said it looked like it died two weeks ago. I mean, the preservation was was uh, absolutely stunning. So, oh, Donna's wrote uh, Jurassic Park brought me back to my first. It's, Hey, I hear you, me too. It felt uh, so cool. I remember actually a couple of years before Jurassic World came out, I went to see the 3D re-release of Jurassic Park, and it was just like, wow. I just, you know, coming home from that, I remember what it felt like, you know, being a teenager again, you know, and I just wanted to sculpt dinosaurs and, you know, I mean, the 90s was the time for dinosaurs. I mean, from Jurassic Park to probably a little bit after The Lost World, dinosaurs were so popular, and you could get dinosaur books and you know, um, everywhere. The model kit industry was just thriving with, uh, like, the garage kit industry in the 90s, lunar models, Kyoto kits, you know, and then even the Jurassic Park stuff that, you know, wasn't as good, but... Uh, like Ravel and stuff, and then obviously the good uh, Jurassic Park kits from uh, Horizon. You know, they were awesome, and you know. So I just hope that uh, this time people coordinate with the documentaries, because that was another thing. Lots of good documentaries in the 90s and stuff, and now you're not, we're not getting them. Dinosaur Revolution's been quite a while, same with Planet Dinosaur, so I'd like to see some more of that. So, yes, they are stellar discoveries. They are absolutely amazing. I'm actually, uh, Zool, um, I started to uh, make a um, an armature, the sculpt one. So I'm really excited about that. I'm going to uh, message some people at the ROM and see if I can get some more information and stuff like that. Cause, uh, and I'm hoping that they put put it out for display so I could see it there. It would be really awesome. So, cause you gotta you gotta study it, right? When you're doing sculptures, the references are key. Like, I'm actually sculpting this dinosaur right now on the on a different table than where I normally sculpt it, and in front of me is a is a cork board with all. Um, drawing the, the skull where the muscles attach and then uh, for the outer stuff I got a Komodo dragon and a turkey and some other stuff I have the velociraptor from Jurassic Park on there for skin detail references and stuff so very important to uh, have references so same with uh, with Zool, I'm going to get as much references as possible. I'll show you my very, <laughs> very um, terrible start to my armature. I'm just going to pull it down here. There's a, this is just the basic beginning. This is a rough skull. It's going to look um, a lot better than that. But I try to make the skull as perfect as I possibly can uh, before I start sculpting the rest. So... Um, okay, so I got to read a few comments here. Um, I saw, oh, yeah, I showed the Allosaurus at the beginning of the video, but I quickly show him now. He's just a little tiny guy. I was explaining how he's going to be in scale with the uh, Batat dinosaurs, so. I'm working on it. I'm trying to figure out how to make little tiny teeth to go there. This is just rough. There's a skull underneath there. Very rough right now. So, And he's going to be in scale with uh, with these little Batat dinosaurs. I'm sure you guys have seen these. I showed it at the beginning of the video. But again, that's what they look like in the box. So, so he's going to go with those. And I've actually thought about seeing if Batat was going to continue the line. Um, I'm not sure if they're planning on doing that. Unfortunately, the sculptor, Dan LaRusso, passed away, and which was very sad. He was a huge 
uh, dinosaur uh, guy from the 90s. He had his own dinosaur studio. He he made all the original batats for the Boston Museum of Science, and he even sculpted the life-size T-Rex that's there. So, very sad to hear of his passing, but I'd like to see Batat continue the line, you know, in his to keep his legacy going. So, and I would definitely be interested in continuing that and adding some dinosaurs to that. So, I'm going to grab some, uh, we're going to do, I'm going to get, uh, I don't know, use this now, because now we're going to start scraping and cleaning this up a little bit, make it look a little more even, and, uh, oh, thanks, buddy. I noticed Donna left a comment, amazing to see such detail instead of just bones, yes. Well, that's what paleo art is all about, right? Bringing these guys to life. And that's what I love to do. Hopefully when this guy is finished, I'll uh, be able to cast him. I like to make some casts of this guy and uh, hopefully... Uh, able be able to release them as a model kit or finished piece now to do so I'd have to well to make it affordable I'd have to make it um, hollow I'd have to hollow cast this guy so because you wouldn't want solid resin first of all it'd be too heavy You'd, I mean this is something you're gonna want to hang up on your uh, you're gonna want to hang it up on your wall so you're not going to want it to weigh too much and a lot of people myself included like to put uh, glass eyes so if it's hollow you can put the glass eyes in without having to drill all the way through it so <clears throat> so it would be, be hollow cast again to to save money you know save on some cost so but uh I don't know. What do you guys think? Would you be interested in hanging a Ceratosaurus bust up on your uh, up on your wall? All right. So I better get caught up. Oh. Nice to hear, Frederick. Yeah, Therizinosaurus is an awesome dinosaur, and I actually, believe it or not, built um, the armature for a Therizinosaurus well over a year ago for a large. It's pretty big. It's a 115th scale, and uh, kind of left it alone, and I've been looking at it the last few days, so that's uh, pretty interesting. So, and Raven... I've also started to sculpt some dinosaurs inspired by your... Oh, well, thank you so much, buddy. Thank you. You know, that's really nice to hear people say that. I will say this to you. I am learning as well. I wouldn't consider myself a master sculptor. And, well, anything I've learned, I've learned from others who have done it before me. <coughs> um, Bob Morales um, wrote a book with um, two other people in the 90s, and I can't remember their names uh the beginner's guide to sculpting dinosaurs if you can ever get a hold of that book i mean after the making of jurassic park that was the book that taught me the basics on how to do this so if you can ever get a hold of that book definitely so and then you know a lot of tips from other people um a lot of people know shane folks from cretaceous creations and you know he's been a big help to me and you know, I've been able to talk to some other sculptors and see stuff like that. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's again, it's research, watching this. And that's why I make these. Because when I, you know, a few years ago, I wanted to get back into sculpting. I'm looking everywhere. There's no vids at all. Very few books. Um, you know, and I, I found it really hard. So... 
that's why I set out to make sure that I would make it so others could learn with me. So that's where I'm. Uh, <coughs> that's that's where I'm at. You know, I'm not like, oh, I'm going to make these dinosaurs and sell them as model kits. So I don't want to show anybody how to do anything else because then they won't buy model kits for me and stuff. You know, I don't I don't think that way. You know, like I'm selling stuff and and if anybody wants to buy any kits for sure but you know what go and make your own too you know and, and it's not even that way it's like you think of it this way like Shane has a certain amount of models and you can have every one that he makes but you could say you know what I really want a, you know a Tarbosaurus to go with his whatever instead of a T-Rex so and now I know how to make one so I'm going to make that you know it doesn't stop you from buying someone else's stuff it just it's just nice to be able to sculpt your own as well too you know so that's kind of my take on the whole learning thing and I saw um, Donna yeah you know what Donna give it a try I think you'll love it I really do you know and you uh, I know you do a lot of bird photography, so you have tons of references right there, because birds and dinosaurs. So, by all means, give it a shot. You'd be surprised what uh, what you can do. See how that's starting to smooth out now? It's starting to look a little bit better. It's getting there. Yeah, oh, Frederick, you got that book? Good to know. Yeah, if you can find a picture of it while I'm sculpting, post it up under so people can see. Because I know the second edition's out. Um, I'm just going to uh, stop for one second and grab something to show you guys. I got to get some stuff down here for one second. I have a bunch of. Uh, stuff set up in my I set up on a shelf that anything that where I've started something and I'm gonna finish it later so I'm just gonna quickly show you guys there we go now I don't have the arms are sitting up there I'm not gonna pull them down but this is actually my uh, Therizinosaurus from uh, that one I was telling you about Frederick from a while ago so it's a 15th scale just been sitting up there so maybe we should uh, sculpt uh, maybe we should sc sculpt uh, at the same time you sculpt yours I'll sculpt mine and see what we come up with It'd be cool to see each other's take on it for sure Donna I will I only actually have one uh, one pick of the t of the turkey right now but uh, yeah I'll definitely give you a, a shout I like to get some more reference picks of uh, ostriches and emus and the cassowary and stuff like for um, like the feet area stuff like that the head I actually took a amazing it was so cool I was able to stick my phone right up against the fence line and the emu was right there looking at me so uh, yeah it was so cool to to get that close up it's actually my profile pick yeah sure yeah I'd like to see your see it post it up in the comment buddy let's see your see where you're at with it See, this is what I love. I, I love seeing what other people are doing and, you know, getting other people uh, inspired, just like I got inspired, like I was saying at the beginning of the video, watching um, Sculpture Geek. is It's a YouTube channel. Uh, that guy's amazing. You can find him on Facebook. I went right away after watching him and looked up uh, his Facebook and liked it, and I shared um, the video on my timeline that he did and uh, 
Yeah, it was really good. So I'm actually going to grab the board here for a minute because it actually didn't stick as well as I thought it was going to. So I'm going to put this board right behind me here. I'm going to grab this out. So this is my little reference board. I'll hold it. I'll put it in here so you guys can see. These are some of the references that I'm using. Um, the raptors from Jurassic World. There's the turkey. Komodo dragon. My Ceratosaurus, when it's done, I'm doing um, kind of a throwback 90s Gregory S. Paul look. All right, so what I want to do now, I'm going to leave the bottom here for a couple of minutes. I'm going to let it get nice and hard and we'll smooth it even more by melting it. So I'm going to uh, pull it forward a bit and then I can turn it a little bit closer to me. And before I go, because I'm not going to be on too much longer, I'm going to uh, try to put fill in this ridge and do half of this because it should be up higher. We're going to put it to a nice kind of point or a little bit more of a point than what it is. Um, so, um, if anyone's interested, I'll try and post um, some of my um, inspirations and materials that I use or have used in the past which, like I said, would be the uh, Beginner's Guide to Sculpting Dinosaurs. I think that's what it's called. It's either that or the Complete Guide to Sculpting Dinosaurs. I mean, I haven't used it in a while, but when I did, that's that was a, a great resource. So we're going to smooth this in now. I don't want to put too much. That's actually, like, way too much. So we're going to rip that off, and we're just going to put a nice line. Um, another um, resource that's really awesome to get is uh, the making of Jurassic Park and the making of the Lost World. I would show you those books if I had them with me. Next time I'll do a pod or um, a video cast, and I will bring the books in. I bring some materials and stuff. I just kind of go through. Uh, this is what I use when I'm sculpting and. You know, I find this helpful and, you know, kind of just show you some stuff. One thing I will tell you right now, when you're sculpting, one reference book that is a must is um, the Princeton Field Guide to Dinosaurs. It is an absolute must in my view. Because when you're going to sculpt a new dinosaur and you want a skeletal reference, well, there's that's like one of two main places to go. That book or Scott Hartman has skeletaldrawings.com, I believe it's called. And uh, that is, again, another very cool resource see now if you look at that now you can tell that doesn't look right even though that's the shape of the bone so that's how you can tell it probably went up to a little bit more of a point or a little bit higher and again with things like that and Donna would probably know this with birds there's a lot of variations in in a single species so I mean for all we know males could have had a much higher one like um Gregory S. Paul has here where it's a little bit higher and you'll see some restorations where it's not as high. I mean, it could have been a male-female thing. It could have been like Dinosaur Revolution where one Crilophosaurus had a bigger frill on the head or, sorry, a crest than, than another one, you know. And uh, so that's where, that's where the liberties part comes in. Like, I, I don't need to keep it like that follow the bone exactly a scientist can't come and say hey that's 
that's not accurate because first of all we know that they would have had keratin over top so and how much well we don't know and so that's where you can kind of get a little more creative and still keep it within reason so I'm gonna bring that up a little bit higher not too much higher and the thing is with sculpting too is you know what I can take it off if I don't like it I don't like the look of it it can it can go so we're just trying to see here that kinda looks a little more accurate I'm not gonna say that it goes to um, a point you know I still think it needs a little more actually on the back end not necessarily to just collecting my shavings of clay Oh, someone asked what kind of clay I used, and I'm sorry, I just forgot about that. Again, I mentioned it at the beginning, but I will say it again. This is monster clay. This is the medium blend. You can get a soft, and you can also get um, you can also get the uh, hard version depending on what you like when you're sculpting. I mean, you you don't need the hard version. Uh, maybe for molding and casting but I'm not sure about that we're gonna bring this down tilt it I think I'm gonna bring it in a little bit I'm not sure yeah kind of like that maybe so again I'm just roughing the, this out and I gotta scroll back down to the bottom in case there's more Yes, there we go. Donna, thank you for sharing that link. It says, Eddie, LF, and eight others have shared your video. And I will say it right now. I really appreciate that. And thank you so much. Keep sharing them, to, especially to um, whatever dinosaur or, um, or paleo art groups you can. That really helps. Um, it's nice to get a big audience. And the bigger audience we get, the more feedback we get from other people. You know, and... Get other good sculptors watching and give, giving feedback. So I'm at almost an hour already. Um, one thing I will say is when you're doing this, time flies. You know, because it's so fun, right? So we're going to just curve this over here. I'm going to take a look at what this reference we can see how it kind of curves in it's not straight up so we're gonna kind of go with that a little bit we're gonna use um, I think we're gonna use this tool here now sculpting tools just go buy a bunch of them to start off with I know that sounds kind of like a, uh, but there's different kinds of tools so buy a kit with all of them in there that's how I would start if I were you um, and then you what happens is you'll get a kit with all these tools and stuff and there'll be certain ones in the kit that you will like and other ones will just get tossed off to the side so but you know and you could also make your own tools I made uh, I made a couple of my own tools. I'm not so good at it. I've seen uh, other videos where people have made all these awesome loop tools and stuff with like guitar strings and blades and all that stuff. I like to try it. I own the one tool I did make was this because I couldn't find one anywhere. I found it like super hard to find one. The only one I could find was a exact repeat of the one that I had originally and I can't show it to you oh here it is this little tiny one for like the longest time that's all I could find and I mean I already had one of those so I didn't need another one I wanted some bigger ones then I finally <coughs> long after building one found that uh, the, that uh, the Kemper tools made one so I don't know about the states but in Canada we have a place uh, in Etobicoke, which is technically really Toronto, 
uh, called Sculpture Supply Canada, and that's where I get a lot of my sculpting stuff, because when you go to Michael's and stuff like that, they don't really cater to sculptors, so it's kind of hard. So, so you got to find these sculpture... these different sculpture stores. I know in the States there's a lot of online ones because I have kind of checked in the past. So, but in Canada it's not really, um, it's not really, uh, there's not really too many of them. So, you gotta pretty much go to Sculpture Supply. You can get like basic sculpting tools uh, from Amazon too, so not really the best of stuff, but you can get some basic stuff. Just kind of taking some of this off, I don't like it, there's a little too much. So, but yeah, tools, um, Amazon, and stuff like that, but I suggest going to the um, sculpting stores I think Hobby Lobby has some stuff I know like the the clay you're not gonna get unless you order it online or you go to a sculpting store you won't get you can't get monster clay from uh, from the store I don't I don't know if Amazon sells it I don't think I know they don't in Canada Amazon in Canada is actually kind of compared to compared to the US um, retail wise the US is um, far better all we have in Canada now is Walmart <laughs> so but yeah just get some just get like a bunch of different tools and uh, that'll be a good start and uh, I'll show you so there's like three basic types of tools and I'll just show them quickly I'll just hold up a bunch of random ones to show you okay these are like um like these loop tools or rakes and stuff there for taking stuff back off and smoothing stuff and then my other set here I try to keep them separate this is for putting in details you got the pin lines little circles little triangles and stuff like that so there's two different things and then you got these kind of like um, wire um, brush tools and they work great for smoothing stuff down as well as creating fur for mammals and and kind of a feathery like a basic feathery texture so yeah so both uh, those tools are they're great for both those applications definitely good to use I'm just gonna turn my uh, crock pot off now because it's I've got more than enough clay I don't really need too much more I'm almost done here I'm just gonna turn this guy a little bit here I'm gonna flip him around and then you can see maybe I'll bring him back on this angle a little bit and then I'm gonna turn him down you can see where some work needs to be done to join it in here Oop, and my board's gonna fall over on me so I actually don't need it to fall down that far so I'm gonna do this kind of Oop, my clay's a little too soft. Oh, nice, Lucas. Yeah, in, okay, yeah. From Instagram, nice. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Here, let me... Nice to see you on here. I do uh, live videos on Instagram, but I don't really know how to do it because I'd want to do it from my, my uh, desktop, and I don't know how that's done, so... That's why I haven't done any, uh, I haven't done any videos on there. Seeing as Facebook owns Instagram, it'd be nice if they just made it so that when you're broadcasting on Facebook, it would, uh, just automatically stream it to, uh, Instagram as well. That'd be sick if it did something like that. But, uh maybe something to suggest to them at some point in the future so alright
I'm just going to put a little more in here and then I'm going to smooth it out and I can also reduce it later. Oh, there we go. Use this tool. So I got a much larger head I'm working on. <laughs> in my garage I have a life-size Carnotaurus head. I'm doing a bust. Ooh, there's something in my clay. I don't like that. You should see that thing. It's uh, huge. It's really huge. Actually, you know what? It's not in my garage at all. It's right behind me because I brought it down to smear a little uh, epoxy resin on it. Because my wife is a resin artist. So... And those, the paintings she does are really awesome, but they do get some, uh, they do get uh, a lot of drippage over the edge, a lot of wear, so. And uh, I did some inquiring with some people who do life-size work, and they said that uh, if you put a layer of epoxy resin over top of the foam, then the epoxy clay will stick better, so that's... Uh, that's what I'm doing with that so I will finish up I'm just gonna do a little bit more and then before I go I'll just grab the head and I'll show you guys just so you can see I'm just gonna no that's uh, silly way too big of a tool I'm gonna grab a nice small tool so please if you don't already liking this page or following it please do so and uh, that way if you have any questions that you want later or comments or you know whatever feel free to just let me know so I'm gonna look at this from the yeah, this is not good Just gonna bring this down here a little bit and clean it up. I'm starting to like this guy now. He's looking really sharp. Obviously not near done lots and lots of work left to do on him, but he's starting to look really good now. I'm going to scrape this back a little bit. I want to clean it up. So. I'm sure we'll have to add more later, but for now I just want to kind of tidy that up. Get her cleaned up at the top. Then I'm going to add some lines in there. And some lines down. So, one last thing I'll say before I go is another resource that's taught me a lot in the last few years about everything as you can see I have paints and I do airbrushing and other things but even the sculpting is the Stan Winston School of Character Arts get a subscription if you're not interested in all of it just buy some of the videos they I get um, emails like every month from them talking about uh, discounts and and deals that they have and stuff like that so if you're uh, interested in learning this stuff then uh, definitely get on the Stan Winston I know uh, there's some dinosaurs there's ones from life-size foam there's uh, um, there's one where uh, uh, a pretty talented sculptor uh, Christopher Darg is making a, something like about this size a Carnotaurus which is like unbelievable work Shannon Shay's got some good stuff on uh, like basics of sculpting and clay types and 
you know, setting up your shop and stuff like that, and stuff about how to get into the movie industry. Um, with painting, uh, Casey Love is like off the hook, man. That guy's like crazy. Uh, my painting skills just went, psh, went after watching. He had like a three, three hour video on, uh, on painting. So that was, that was absolutely amazing. And then like he did one on Sculpey that I haven't watched yet, but there's like so many good things on there. So definitely check it out. Again, that's uh, Stan Winston School of Character Arts. <coughs> so basically I've got the rough fleshed out version of the one side of the face. I'll turn it this way so you can see that it actually has a little more shape. I might bulk this out a little bit more, add a little bit more detail. Once you put lines and skin detail in it, it'll look a lot better and there's the other side of the face with just the just the skull on there so yeah, I guess you can get an idea of the size of it with in comparison to me so and uh, so I'm gonna leave it at that for now because it's been uh, almost an hour and 15 minutes long which is a pretty long video and I'm sure people uh, are getting tired of watching but I'll definitely do some more the molding and casting video is coming because a lot of people ask me about that I had a lot of people on Instagram ask me so that's uh, that's definitely gonna happen for sure um, so stay tuned for that and uh, I'm gonna end it with showing you one last thing and then I'm gonna roll out So, let's see if I can turn this a little bit. So here it is. <laughs> I gotta move back. Look at that, I can fit right in his mouth. Life-size Carnotaurus head. It's gonna be a huge bust when it's done. So I figured I'd just quickly show you. I'll turn them forward so you can see. It's just very basic right now. But uh, I'm pretty confident that I know what uh, what I need to do with this guy. You can see I've actually see this stuff here. It's not totally hard. So, but I got to smear a couple layers of this on, and then put uh, epoxy clay over it. My plan is is that I wasn't going to do this project until I could make sure that it was um, had as much detail as the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. So this dinosaur, when it is finished, will have ultimate skin detail, at least the best that I could possibly do. And uh, so we'll see. Uh, we'll uh, see how it turns out. So, anyway, sorry I look like a mess. I'm in my uh, art clothes. So, we'll leave it at that. And thank you all for watching. And come back to the Dinosaur Dungeon soon. We'll see you later. Good night, everybody.